When the 2019 Betfred Women's Super League came to a close, no one could have imagined it would be 2021 until it returned. But now, 18 months down the line, the women's game is back. With more teams than ever before and a home World Cup on the horizon, 2021 is set to be a real breakout season for the women's game. It's a massive, massive season. Um, there's the World Cup at the end of it. And that's what um, we need to remember as much as the the momentum has slowed down. Um, people are going to be wa wanting to watch Rugby League. They're looking for the third try of the afternoon. It's a crossfield kick from Roach. The chase is on from Stanley. Who'll collect it? It is Stanley. She drops down, scores the try. It's yet another try and look at Stanley and Georgia Roach. On social media and, and whatnot, they're looking forward to, to seeing the, the women playing. There's a lot of excitement around that. And I think it... It comes down to the players in keeping that momentum going and making sure that what we've been working on um, in the three pre-seasons that we've had um, shows on the field. Like at the end of the day, we want to present a game of rugby league that is entertaining and we have done. And um, as although the momentum has slowed down, um, I think at the end of the day, when we perform on the field as girls, it, that, that's, that's the advertisement right there. Yeah, we were building some really lovely momentum in 2019. Uh, it's, it is a shame that the handbrake of COVID, you know, was reefed upon us. But um, look, I, I just hope that perhaps after a year without, you know, women's rugby in particular and, and a lot of or limited even, you know, in the men's Super League, that people have got a real hunger and thirst for rugby league will play the ball now comes to this near side to hill hill dummies and goes hill through the line needs support gets the pass away on this near side goldthorpe cutting back in going for the line reaches out ball on the line you know, potentially you know there's a lot of people out there hungry to watch a live stream or when gates do open they're hungry to to get back in and, and watch live rugby league so that'll be great and particularly with hosting the you know the world cup men's women's and wheelchair at the end of the year it, it's a really special year and, and hopefully the, the Super League creates some, some great momentum for all of our England squads heading into that. It's been tough. I think everyone's found it really hard and it's not just rugby-wise. Obviously, everyone's got the personal challenges they've been facing throughout this pandemic, but rugby's that release for, for a lot of the women um, and obviously we love it or we wouldn't do it. So, yeah, 18 months without a game is, is a long time. Feeling it's building as Gaskin links it left. With Cunningham, Cunningham, wide ball. It's been testing at times. Um, we've at times we've not known when we're going to be back into into playing or into training. And I think it was a week before our 2020 season started uh, was when we found out that it wasn't going ahead. And initially, um, a lot of the girls thought it was going to be short term. And then, uh, as weeks and months went by, it obviously, as we know, was longer. So. Um, it's like been a, a false ending, really. Um, we've just we've had a lot of pre-seasons, and uh, yeah, it's as I say, it has been tough at times. It's been a, an adjustment, a, a big adjustment. It feels like a very, very long time because it has been a very, very long time. Um, Eighteen months, I think, since you know the last women's Super League game was on, and that was our uh, grand final against Castleford. So yeah, a very long eighteen months. So I can. I can tell you that there's some very excited girls ready for, for this coming Sunday. So exciting. I've been counting down the days. I remember when, when we finally got the fixtures and we knew when the first game would be, it felt like forever away. Um, and at each training session, obviously, we've been counting it down, you know, four weeks, four weeks today, guys, three weeks today. Um, so to be able to say it's game week this week um, is pretty, pretty special. Okay. It's cutting up, cutting up for the line and cutting up has got there. Brilliant. The girls you can feel in training are all just buzzing and excited to, to get out there on Sunday. And I know that'll be the same across the board. I know what training this week is going to be. Uh, like I say, everyone's going to be buzzing. And Sunday's training a week ago from Sunday, it was a great training session. So just got to keep pushing on as a team. And obviously the Women's Super League's just getting better. They go down the blind side, though. Here they come. The pass out wide. Gentles is there. But Wilson's got away from her and has scored in the corner. Great finish there. I've had quite a lot of time out, like every other team. Um, 
obviously 2019 wasn't quite our season. 2018 was our first season together. We've had quite a few changes in the squad. So a few, few players have gone to St. Helens. We've got some new squad members in and it's really good to see them pushing and working hard for a shirt. Um, so I think we've just got to wait out and see how, how the game goes on Sunday and then we can try, to, try and go from there. Of the cup winners, the now the double winners, the Leeds Rhinos. It might be hard to... Uh... To top that trophy-wise, you know, of course, we, we're always looking for that elusive treble, aren't we? Um, and, look, that's that's certainly in the back of our minds. Um, but, look, it, it'll be a successful year regardless, I think, um, of, of trophies. I think it'll be just successful to get rugby back on, full stop. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, we had a hangover for quite some time from, from them games and from them finals, but... With the with the adjustments that have happened with the coaching staff, we've brought in um, a member of staff to work on our our psyche and our mentality, and we do believe that we were given the tools to to win them games, and it was it was other things rather than what we were working on um, skill wise and and game prep wise. It was it was what was between our ears really. So we've been working a lot. We've been uh, working a lot on that. Um, and, and hopefully we just want to perform in every game. We're trying not fixating on it being a final. We're just going with, we take each game as it comes. And then if we reach the final, then it's just another game. And that's really what we, we need to work on as a group. If I look at the development of the squad from what we had in 2019 through to now, you now I say we underperformed then. If I look at the squad now, I just think, wow, we could do something really special this year. We've added some fantastic names to our squad. We've got Carrie Roberts, Amy Hardcastle, obviously a really well-known name in the in the women's game, as well as others that have been brought in and, and really added to the strength of our squad. So it's looking really positive for this year. And I think all the focus for us at training has been around making sure that we don't repeat the errors that we made in 2019. And the, the Women's World Cup is, is massive. And it is, it, there's a lot of, of work that goes into to play in for the squad and we've got a lot of um, competitive shirts at the moment and you really do have to put the work in week by week and the performances on the field and and we know that and it, it is it's going to be massive the World Cup. There's competition with the girls that are in the performance programme you're fighting for your position in that but also as well they're going to be looking out for people for new people coming into the performance programme and it's good to have healthy competition and, and keep pushing forward ready for the World Cup but like you say it's it's a, it's a good step up for the women's game. That's that's why we sort of compete at England wise. You know, it's tough. Like we've had a brutal preseason as England, which has been great, but hard work at the same time. You know, every Saturday, brutal. You know, four hour long sessions. Um, you know, gym wise conditioning, loads of fitness testing. Um, which you know you can see has had such an impact on the girls. They look so good. Like that, you can just see how athletic everyone's looking, and the fitness testings of the scores have gone up and up and up. Um, so yeah, you can, you can sort of feel the pressure because we were having so much contact time with England, which is great. So all that focus is on that World Cup. If you're, if you're a fan of rugby league or you're a fan of, of sport, then the women's game is no different. We train just as hard as the men. Um, the entertainment on the field is, is exactly the same as, as the, the men's league. And if you want to see... A group, of, a group of women who put the heart and soul into the 80 minutes on the field, um, as competitive as the men, run as hard as the men, tackle as hard as the men, and, and have a skill set just like the men, then definitely tune in. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think it'll be mixed emotions across all of the girls. Um, I know particularly for our girls, there'll be a lot of nerves. Uh, with some of the young players coming in, there'll be a lot of excitement, but... I know me personally, um, it'll be met with so much gratefulness. And um, that's probably the biggest emotion that sticks out for me. And I'm already super grateful for the, you know, the efforts that have gone in to get us under the elite guidelines, back to training and, and matches. So, yeah, plenty of gratefulness going around on, uh, on Sunday, that's for sure.